County, WCCS AM 1160, 101.1 FM. She's from Minnesota, but we welcome her anyway. She's Diane Overman, <laughs> the Indiana County Veterans Providers Group. Corey Shea with us from IUP and uh, the Veterans Resource Center there is uh, the Military Resource Center. is just tremendous. And good morning to both of you. Good morning. It's good to have you here with us today. What are we talking about with the vets today? Well, today I brought Dr. Shea from the IEP Military Veterans Resource Center. He's been part of our group since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, He works with the um, veterans at IUP. Um, We work with him to support them um, through our group and any events that go on. So he's here to talk a little bit about what they're doing over at IEP. I remember just a couple of years ago when the office was established and uh, just getting off the ground. And now you're flying high, huh? Yeah, we are flying high. I mean, uh, in the, since I took over as director of the office, our enrollment for our military affiliated students has grown 77% since 2015. Yeah, we see those designations that come out all the time. IUP is a military friendly school, um, is a school that um, the military uh, services uh, recognize as being a very valuable asset. Um, so, so, what makes IUP's military environment so encouraging? Uh, you know, first off, we have the Military and Veterans Resource Center. The veterans have their own space on campus. Uh, you know, you look at all the national research that's been done on veterans. And now there's not been a lot, but what's been done is that veterans, when they go back to college, they want to re-interact with veterans. Mm-hmm. It helps to make that transition in. So that space on our campus gives them a chance to go and socialize, meet other veterans. Uh, my work study students, they're all veterans or all current military. And so it gives them the chance to interact, socialize. We have a veterans uh, club on campus. They do a lot of uh, community service projects. They're heavily involved with the sleepover at Walmart and all the other things that go on in the community. And, you know, just the amount of services that IUP has poured into helping our veterans from the moment they get to college to the moment they graduate. Uh, It's been tremendous. I would guess that uh, because of the world situation in the last 15 to 20 years, Uh, that the type of veteran coming through IUP now uh, might be different because most vets uh, who come to IUP, or many, I should say, are going to have um, overseas experience, are going to have wartime experience. And and that changes their dynamic, doesn't it? It does. It really does. Um, I'm not sure what percentage of our veterans have seen overseas experience, but I know it's it's majority of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And not just are the people that graduated high school, went into the military, but we have a large number of National Guard Reserve members who are college students and who have been deployed during their college career and went overseas to Afghanistan, Iraq, or somewhere in the Middle East, and then have come back from that experience, too. Uh, My favorite one was we had a uh, nursing major, was a 29-year Navy vet, and he was everywhere, China, Hong Kong, Japan, the Philippines, all over, all over the Polynesian Islands, Africa, South America. Mm-hmm. Heck, he was even somewhere outside of Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> well, this looks like outside of Antarctica today. It's pretty. <laughs> uh, stop that, Diane. Um, but, but because of that, um, the Resource Center and, and what you said earlier about veterans wanting to be around other veterans, uh, they have a shared experience. They have a shared brotherhood or sisterhood uh, that is probably not understandable to folks who are outside of the military community. That's exactly right. They do. There's that bond that you have. I mean, when you're overseas, you're, re- you're so reliant on your battle buddies. You're so reliant on the people in your unit to help you get through those times. Um, you know, and some of our veterans have had traumatic experiences overseas. They've seen things most people could not believe. But you have that bond with your fellow soldiers to help you get through that. So when you come back in college... Veterans go through a sense of isolation when they first come back because they no longer have that unit. They no longer have that chain of command there to support them. And that's one of the things our center tries to do is give them that support, allow them them to interact with other veterans, and then help them navigate the college bureaucracy as it is. There are other challenges, too, for veterans, I would assume, on campus as well. Classroom environment uh, challenges, um, uh, the whole university community um, relationship uh, that is different because of what they've been through as well. It, it is different, and you know one of their challenges that they face is uh, we have we have a collection of memes up in our office, and one of them is from Billy Madison when he was sitting in the elementary school room, and it says, "How you feel when you finally use your GI Bill?" Because <laughs> for a lot of them, that's how they feel. You know, mm-hmm. they may be twenty nine, thirty years old, and they're sitting now in the room with seventeen, eighteen year old freshmen who just haven't had those experiences. Yeah. And then as one veteran said to me, he goes. Uh, and you hear them complain about the littlest things like 
yeah. you know, their lunch was cold. <laughs> uh-huh. what's, what's important to the average kids coming out of high, high school, school is entirely different from somebody who's been in a wartime theater. Exactly, exactly. And uh, But, you know, our veterans at IUP, I, I think the overall can- uh, climate of the campus has really made it easy for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, you don't say easy, but it's really helped them to adapt to that university environment. And I know a lot of our veterans have said they use their experiences and to try to step in the classroom and be leaders for the students. Like he goes, when they're group projects, uh, I have one student says that whenever we have a group project, I always take the lead with it because, yeah. you know, there's, they're more focused on what they want to do and everything. And, you know, they're not waiting until the last moment to get things done. And, they have an idea of command structure, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that probably is very helpful in, in those group educational uh, settings, I would, I would assume. Diane, uh, what IUP does uh, for, for veterans uh, and in working with veterans uh, reaches out into other parts of the Indiana County community, doesn't it? Absolutely. And that's, I think that's one of the, the unique things about this group is um, anybody that serves veterans in terms of housing, education, employment, uh, medical, um, when we come to- together and support each other on how we work individually as a group with, with veterans, um, it's really important that that veteran gets their needs met. So, you know, so many times um, I might come across somebody um, at the sleep out this weekend. Somebody from the group approached me about a widow who is seeking some help, um, whose husband had just passed away. So I was able to shoot out an email to the group, and instantly, you know, those those options were starting to come in for that person. So, you know, it's really a, a passionate group, and it's it's a very active group. And I I am just privileged to work with them because they're all great professionals. And yeah. you know, and I you talked a little bit about um, the camaraderie with veterans. I'm not a veteran, and that is so true. You know, we have veterans that come to the table. We have mm-hmm. people that are not veterans, and it's really. Um, it's really a mixture of people, but it's it's really special to see how veterans help out veterans. And, and Corey, I think what she makes a, a good point of saying is that uh, in the IUP dynamic, you're talking about not only veterans coming from different wartime or military experiences, and they're coming from different geographical areas as well. They're here from Western PA. They might be from out of state. Uh, they might be coming to uh, an area that is completely unfamiliar to them, and yet... <laughs> in the camaraderie and in the fellowship of other um, military veterans uh, and, and active military, they have, they have a little bit firmer foundation underneath them when they come to IUP. They do. They do. And uh, the other thing we're starting to see with our, with our population is when they move into community housing uh, in the area, they're actually living with other veterans or other people who currently serve in the military oh, yeah. to again, build that camaraderie and to build that, uh, you know, to live with people who they have had common experiences with. Yeah, that's sourcing from the resource center. That, I guess that's exactly what you're all about, is uh, putting them together to see what their needs are uh, and then finding out a, a solution to whatever their challenge might be. That's exactly it. We're, we're a one-stop shop. You know, very first thing we help them with is the GI Bill benefits because without those benefits, we don't have our veterans. They don't go to college. And then while they're there as students, whatever issues they may have, if they need tutoring help, if they need... Uh, issues with if they have health issues and they need to see a VA hospital um, we get them in touch with if we can't help them here at IUP then I reach out to the veterans providers group mm-hmm. and say hey I got a veteran in need this is what their need is uh, you know maybe something like this veteran needs affordable health, uh, daycare yeah, okay. for their children while they go to class so I reach out to the group and say hey anybody got any suggestions that I can pass on to this veteran yeah wow that works that works so well um, and, and that is, you know, when you organize a resource center, that's exactly what the mission is. It's to find out what the needs are and then reach around to everybody else who's a part of it and, and say, okay, what's the answer? And work together in that way. Very good. Hey, we're glad you came in in the snow today. Well, thank you for having thank us. You. Um, the Diane just loves this. She, <laughs> she's going to go out and make snow angels. <laughs> Or it's maybe not. pretty out there. Or I love not. it. <laughs> um, uh, you. But we do thank you for coming in to visit with us here today. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS AM 1160, 101.1 FM. That's Diane Overman and Corey Shea with us this morning. We visit with the Veterans Providers Group once a month.